This is Code.org, and I am going to be working on some of the hackathon project today. Specifically, I wanted to focus in on how to use mapping. So that's one of the things they have provide us for brainstorming. Map. Add or change an item in a list. Example. Map a list of numbers pulled from a column using math round. Now each number is rounded. So I'm actually going to copy and paste this right now into my program. So I know exactly what I'm doing. So here I am. And what I am demonstrating is how to map. Boom, boom. Remember, a comment is for us humans. The computer ignores a comment. And I'm just going to put it up here so I can keep in mind what the goal is. All right. So let's do that. Let's go grab something, a list with some numbers that we can edit, we can change. So what I'll be demonstrating in this tutorial is how you can loop through information, change it, and keep that list up to date with the changed information. I will then I will then demonstrate how to add to a list, right? Map a list. So you can add or change each item in a list. So let me look at our data here. And so if we're going to be rounding, we're going to need something with decimal places. And I'm going to wander my way into weather, which is under science here. I think. Perfect. So what I'm going to use then is weather. We're going to be rounding some information with weather. So I'm now going to select the daily weather import. And I have access to the daily weather information. Let me zoom back in here and head back to my code. So to be able to do this, to be able to map, first we want to grab that information from our list. So I'm going to need a variable. Let me boop, boop and head into block mode. And variables, var x. I will name this because the information I want from my data is going to be, oh, it's kind of hard to get access to. Okay. Ooh, got to zoom way out here just so I can see it. It's going to be, uh, let's round the, sure, the high temperature. So that's going to be the column I want. And then I'm going to want the city name. Keep in mind there are duplicates. So we'll might want to be considering how that will affect things. But for now, I want to round the high temperature code. Okay, so I'm going to make a list of uh, high temps rounded, though or a high rounded list. There we go. Okay. Now the other list I'm going to want, I want to know the city. So uh, city, or let's just call this name list, I guess. And then there's one other list since they are going to be different, right? Since we have a city three times, let's get this date information as well. So, and I'll call this date list. All right. Now I need to instruct it what data to get. I'll need this three times. And what will be occurring here is when this gets called, when this gets used, when this code runs, I'm instructing the computer to go, hey, computer, make this new variable name list. What is it equal to? Uh, well, you got to go to our daily weather data set. So all of this information, what do I want you to get from it? The entire column of the city's names. So now it's going to put in however many, 100, I don't know, 200, however many cities are in there, it's going to put it in. Now, our city name list will have Anchorage three times, or four, five, I guess five times, Fairbanks five times. However many things, it grabs every word in this and puts it into our list. Now, that being said, let's do the date as well, like I stated. Daily weather and choose date. And then finally, we're going to get that high temperature to round it. Okay, great. So we have all that all on the list. Once we do so, we need to have access to be editing and changing up the information in our list. So how do you get information from a list? Let me go ahead and just to give us a little bit of room to work with here, I'm going to text area. I am not building out a full app. Of course, this is just an example. So I'm just going to say um, weather output. Sure. And then I'm going to just drag out a button. And I'll say uh, map button. And I'll say start. Okay, might as well throw a theme on this because why not? Eh, eh, I don't like that one. Eh. 
No, nah, why am I doing this? I'm gonna take this way too seriously. That was ugly. No. Fine, whatever. All right, that it is. Okay, so here we are, and we have our list. What I need to do now is to go ahead and create a function, and what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna put a space here because I find it easier to read this way. What I'm gonna do in this function is I'm going to put some code that will allow us to be editing this list of information. Because remember, we have the daily weather. Well, how do we access information in a list? I can tell you right now, what's this named? Oh yeah, weather output. So let's go ahead and just for starters, check out how we're gonna be setting this up. Set text, perfect. Set text of what? Well, I wanna set the weather output text, right? And what do I wanna set it to? Well, how can I access items in a list? Remember, we can use numbers. So name list is the list of however many things. High round list is the list of the temperatures like 300 times. So if I type in high rounded list, this is everything in that list. If I just want the first thing, lists start at zero. They start at zero. So zero is the first item. It's kind of strange, right? Because everything really starts at one in life. But in programming, we start with zero. So the list starts with zero. And if I ask for the high round of list zero, well, let's see what happens here. I'm going to hit run and on event ID refers to, oh, that didn't get set. Strange. 28.33. So what is that grabbing for me? Hmm. Go all the way up here. 28.33. So at index zero notice, it is getting us the temperature, the high temperature for the first item in our list. Again, we start at zero for indexes. It's strange. You'll get used to it. Okay. So that being said, we now can access that first item. I'm not worried about that though. I need to be able to edit that first item. Wait a minute, I need to edit all the items. Well, let's keep on testing to make sure we know what we're doing first. How do we round an item? Well, let me go ahead now and instead of just doing set text, we can see that it is 28.33. I wanna try out set text, sure. And same thing, but let's look into rounding. Math random round, here we are. And keep in mind, I don't always remember what every little component, what every little method is doing. If you click on it, it gives you a ton of useful information. So returns the number rounded to the nearest integer. Great, so we just need to drop our number into this. Cool. So we already have a number. I can just grab this now and say, okay, now what should happen is the text should output the rounded number 28.33, which is at index zero. Okay, well now we've only rounded one number. And honestly, we're only putting it on the screen. In our list, our list still has the unrounded number. See, it's still there. And this is what we need to change. So we know we can access it, we know we can round it. How do I change an item in the list? Well, the same way I'm getting access to this item, I can change it. For instance, if I were to head to variables now and do, I rounded list zero. I'm telling it, okay, grab the high rounded list zero. It's going to equal something else. So whatever data point, we're asking the computer right now. Oops, didn't mean to do that. I meant to do this. We're asking the computer here to go ahead and, hey, computer, when I click the button, you need to give the high round list index zero, so that first thing at the list, a new value. We're gonna make it equal to a new value. What is it gonna be equal to? It's gonna be equal to whatever used to be at that old value, 28.33, rounded. So whatever used to be there, it's now rounded, and we're gonna make that the new value. So let's take a look now when we hit run. And again, I'm just printing them down here in the watchers, but look, now it's actually 28, because now we're changing it on the list, not on the screen. That's only changing one thing, we got around 600 things in this list. And that's where loops become your and my best friend. Four. All right, real quick, let's talk about a for loop. What's it doing? Yada, yada, yada. So for i, i is equal to zero. We have this variable. We're starting it at zero. Why start it at zero? Well, keep in mind, what, what number do lists start with when you're trying to get to indexes? Zero. So I'm going to create this variable i. It's going to be equal to zero. 
Right now, I'm telling the computer never let i be bigger than 4, i++. i++ means add 1 to i each time. Let me demo what this is doing. Set text. Map button. So when I click that map button, and I'm going to kind of cheat here. I'm just going to copy this guy. And paste it there. Oh, let me clean this up. That's annoying. Okay, so what's happening here? Well, we should be setting the text each time this goes. Right now, we're going to set it four times. Oh, not the map button. Not screen one. Weather output. Run. Start. And it's getting covered up each time. Let me reset this, though. And let's go ahead and instead of that, do I. This isn't going to be that helpful because it's going to go all the way down to the fourth one. But what we're not seeing is it's looping through. It first goes to 28, 24, 10.9, 14.3, and that's what ends up on our screen. So now we can start looping through the information. Well, keep in mind, we don't want to display it. We need to change it. We already figured out how to round it, so I'm going to drop this down. Let me reset this. I'm going to take this guy and put it right here. And now, instead of saying zero, I'm going to say, okay, loop through each item, each item, and change it. So I and I. And what will happen at this point, let's clean this up a bit. What will happen at this point is we're asking the computer to loop through this list at each index starting at zero, then one, then two then three, it's going to give that index a new value. The new value for each index in the list will be equal to whatever that used to be, but rounded. So let's take it, let's hit run here and see if it rounds the first four items in our list. Boom. Did you see that? Let me do it again. You see them down here? Not rounded. Start. And they're rounded. Cool. All right. We don't want just the first four. We want the entire list. Thankfully, there's a super easy way to do that in code, actually. And what I'm going to do here is say, okay, our high round list dot length. I'll click out of that. This will give me the length of the entire list, which is 600. It will make sure then that I never hit 600, which is great because we don't want to go past the edge of the list. If you go past the edge of the list, you'll get an index out of range error, something like this. So now it should round all 600 things. I is going to keep going till it hits the end of the list length. So let's see here. You can see nothing's rounded. Whoop, what do we got? Oops, we can't figure out what high round list. Oh, spelling. Boom, everything's rounded. One more time. Run. Nothing's rounded, right? Boom. Pretty cool. So just like that, we've edited an entire list. Now, what if we, and we can output the information together. I'm going to do that at the end. The other thing I wanted to just show, though, was how to add, right? Map a list with numbers, pull from a column using round. So you can add or change each item in a list. If I want to add an item to a add or change. Adding to a list, there's two things you might be thinking when they say that. I'm just going to show all. One could be a append. A append is how you would add a single item to a list. The other thing that you might think about is what if you wanted to put something on at the end of a string? So maybe you want every city to say city in front of it. Let me real quick do both of those things. So I'm going to head to design. I'm going to go to button. I'm going to drag one out. And no, I'm not apparently. Yes, I am. And say uh, change or yeah. Change text, sure. Change, sure. Okay. And then the other one was to an add, uh, append to a list. So append list button, I guess. And I'll just say append. And append means add an item to a list. Now, real quick, how do we change the strings? So when that's clicked, I'm going to do an on event. And if I want to use the city list, then I'm going to say, well, first change text. Yep, that's what I gave my button as an ID. 
on click. If I want to use this name list, I can do a loop just like I demonstrated here to the point that I'm literally going to copy and paste this copy paste because it's still a list except the name's different name list. So let me change all this to name list and I'm not going to be rounding the name list. I've decided instead I want the word city to appear in front of every city's name. So in quotes, I'm going to put the word city. I'm going to put a space. Actually, I'll put a colon space plus and then what do I want to be here? I want the city's name there. So whatever I used to have in the city's names list is now going to be that same thing. I'm looping through the entire city name list. I'm saying that's great. It is the city name list, but now it's going to be equal to the word city plus the name at each index. So I'll change all of those to be the word, the original city's name, but with the word city in front of it. So let me show you what this will do. And I'm going to do name list here to track what's going on. Run. And so notice all these cities and change. And the word city is going to be appearing in front of them. Finally, how to append to a list. I'm going to go do an on event. Append list button, click. And I'm not sure what I would append to this list. Uh, what other list? Did I did a date list now. Let's just append to the names. And that means add on to a list append item and so i'm currently living in uh well let's do somewhere i have lived which is austin texas so let's do the name list uh i don't need to say the spot it will append it to the end and i'm just going to say austin say i want to append the name austin to the list and maybe i want to do a few different cities so maybe i want to do austin and Oop, boop, boop. Maybe I want to do Houston and then maybe Dallas. All right. So maybe I want to do these three. Now, when I click that button, let's hit run. Let me get rid of the names now. Oh, no, I need the names. Just kidding. Boom. All right. And so way down here at the bottom, there's not an Austin and a Dallas yet. But if I click append, boom, there we are. I just added to the list. And what's cool, I can now click change and I'm further editing the list. And here's Dallas Austin with the word city in front of it. So real quick tutorial and then you can start outputting this to this area and such. But that is how you use map to be editing and changing a list.